Alright, so this video took me a long, long time to make because I had many issues with the 9070 XT. But today we're going to be having a look at F1 2025. It is 2025, yes. Uh, with the 5070 Ti and the 9070 XT, we've got the 5070 Ti on the left and the 9070 XT on the right. I'm going to just show you the full run for the first run, right? I'm just doing a built-in benchmark here. I'm using Australia in daytime. And uh, today we're going to be pairing these GPUs with the 7800X3D and uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 6,000 megatransfers per second CL30 memory. Now, 1440p ultra high, that includes ray tracing, but not path tracing. And yeah, you can see that both the GPUs are pretty much equal, right? We are seeing an average of uh, 78, 79 frames per second. The lows are pretty uh, similar as well. The AMD GPU is consuming quite a bit more power than the NVIDIA GPU, but I do have a Pilot 5070 Ti, the Game Rock, and that is locked at 995 millivolts, right? By the well, by the factory, I can put it like that, or the, by the manufacturer. So I can't, uh, I don't ever really see 300 watts on this GPU. That's why the power draw is a little bit lower than maybe what you'll see elsewhere. MSI models, for example, has 107.5 millivolts. So anyway, at the end of the benchmark run here, you can see both GPUs are pretty identical here when ray tracing is enabled. The 5070 Ti has slightly better lows, but... <laughs> Overall, these two GPUs using these exact same settings will give you pretty much the same experience. All right, now for the rest of the benchmarks, I'm just going to show you the last half just to get uh, the results out of the way, right? I don't want you to <laughs> sit here and watch the, the whole benchmark. Now, just one thing to note is that the benchmark runs, even though they are built in, they're not always identical, right? We'll see that a little bit later on. Sometimes you'll start with a position lower or a position higher, that kind of stuff. But anyway, yeah, when we have DLSS and FSR set to quality, the 9070 XT pulls ahead slightly by a few percent. The lows are pretty much identical once again, and 0.1% uh, lows are identical, right? So a slightly higher average frames per second here on the 9070 XT. Right, so now we get to the frame generation part and I just want you to have a look in the right hand side. Just look at the mirror there. <laughs> the 9070 XT with FSR frame generation. You get a lot of ghosting when using FSR frame generation. That is unfortunate because in this title as we've seen many times before, FSR frame generation can actually uh, or has lower overheads than dialysis frame generation so the final output frame rate is a little bit higher than with dialysis frame generation but the ghosting is horrible just look at the tire at the, uh, the bottom right uh, or the rear right it uh, it's very distracting very noticeable and also in cockpit view when we get to the well you can see the front wing a little bit later on it ghosts a lot so even though fsr frame generation has a uh, a slight slightly higher frame rate here it is a worse experience just because of the the terrible ghosting right you might have to use this view or the previous view if you want to eliminate ghosting because um i mean your own car doesn't show any ghosting by that but the competitor cars they they will show ghosting when using fsr frame generation and this happens even when we use taa uh, as upscaling or even XSS, it is a frame, an FSR frame generation ghosting issue in this title. Now, unfortunately, using an on-screen display like MSI Afterburner, you cannot see the or cannot capture the 1% and 0.1% lows accurately uh, using the new DLSS frame generation model. That is just the the way it works now, unfortunately. But you can see that the 97 XD using FSR frame generation is around 10% faster when comparing them side by side. All right, so all our previous tests included ray tracing, and now we just have the high preset, which does not enable ray tracing by default. 1440p height, and I just use TAA native just to make it a fair apples to apples comparison. And here you can see that the 97 XD is seven frames per second ahead of the 5070 Ti, this is really nothing, right? You're not going to notice 7 frames per second, especially considering you are getting almost 300 frames per second. All right, and now we get to the path tracing results here. And uh, just 1440p Ultra Max, which is the preset that enables path tracing. On the NVIDIA side, it also enables rate reconstruction, that kind of things. And uh, currently, the 
5070 Ti is quite a bit ahead of the 9070 XT. The 9070 XT is not able to average 60 frames per second here, but the 5070 Ti still drops below 60 frames per second at times. Now, I just want to point out one more thing. The the performance differs per track. They're not the same everywhere. So Australia is quite demanding. Then Bahrain at night is not as demanding. Then uh, Monaco is very demanding again. So this is just to give you an idea what the performance is like. It's not going to be like this in all tracks, in all weather conditions. During the daytime, it is actually more demanding with path racing as well. So that's why I tested with the with, uh, daytime. But here you can see that the... Average frame rate on the 5070 Ti is 66 versus 50 of that of the 9070 XT. All right, so I just have to say that this is the, I'm re-recording the path tracing results here for the 9070 XT. Path tracing did not work for me at all, but luckily we got a driver update from AMD. It is an optional driver update, so it's not going to be downloaded automatically, but uh, that solved most of the issues for me. I do still have some issues every now and again with regards to enabling frame generation, FSR frame generation. Sometimes it does not activate at all. You have to uh, restart the game completely, make sure in the, in the windowed mode, that kind of stuff. Um, doesn't always work, but that is just how it is unfortunately all right so the next one we are actually going to be having a look at path tracing here uh, with the frame generation and now you can see that um i did not show the lows for the nvidia side because with the on-screen display with the new dlss uh, frame generation you cannot see the the lows correctly all right it does record them but it's definitely not correctly recording them but just look at the ghosting here with the uh, with FSR frame generation is enabled especially with path tracing so the frame rate is a little bit lower and then the artifacting with frame generation is a lot worse and, and this is what I meant earlier with regards to AMD still having some issues here with this game now remember you can en enable uh, ray reconstruction with the Nvidia side which is enabled when you enable the ultra max preset whereas currently there's no dedicated ray reconstruction for AMD just yet. But now you can see with frame generation enabled, the 9070 XT is actually not that far behind the 5070 Ti, but that is because FSR frame generation, as we saw earlier, actually has a higher final output than DLSS frame generation when comparing the same settings. All right, so next up we've got uh, MFG enabled. Yes, yeah, so I just tested MFG four times here yeah, and uh, still with path racing enabled. You can see we're getting around 220 frames per second. I also have the PC latency average in the middle left there. You can see it's around 40, 50-ish uh, milliseconds, right? Previously with frame generation enabled uh, just 2x, we were seeing between 40 and 60 milliseconds for PC latency. Now it does go a little bit higher, mid 70s, sometimes low 80s like there. But uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly how that would impact your uh, your experience because uh, I'm not an avid F1 player. But I do know that uh, with the, the controller or maybe even a steering wheel, the there is an inherent input latency, right? So maybe it's not as noticeable if you do play with controller and uh, a steering wheel. As for a steering wheel, proper steering wheel, I'm actually not entirely sure how that uh, handles input latency, but I know with a normal controller, 40, 50 milliseconds of uh, PC latency would not be an issue on a controller. But obviously people are different. That's just me. I can, I can play perfectly fine with this latency on a controller. Others would be a lot more sensitive to it. So if we just have a look at the average frame rate there, we had an average of 217 frames per second with uh, four times MFG enabled. All right, now it's time for the 4K results. And yeah, I just have 4K high TAA native, right? Uh, it's for ultra preset. So this does have ray tracing um ultra high preset and now the performance between these gps is pretty much identical once again similar thing we saw at 1440p right um there's really not much between these gps even even when it comes to ray tracing the the biggest difference in f1 2025 is actually but when it comes to path tracing right and then also the ghosting issues with the uh, FSR slash FSR frame generation. All right, let's move on to 4K high. All right, so at 4K high, so this is without any ray tracing. Now, at the start of the race, the performance between these two are very similar again, which means that, you know, that they've got 
basically similar ray tracing performance and similar raster performance uh, raster performance however you want to pronounce it in this title yeah the rdx uh, 5070 ti is slightly behind the 9070 xt by like four frames per second but once again at 150 frames per second you you're not going to notice that at all but uh, i mean it the 9070 XT is ahead here, but uh, the lows are pretty similar, the averages are pretty similar. So, once again, if you're not interested in path tracing, either of these GPUs will be able to give you a good experience, even at 4K native. All right, now if we move on to 4K ultra high DLSS and FSR set to quality, you can see that uh, the 9070 XT is slightly ahead here. This is with the ray tracing enabled, right? But you have to keep in mind that it is with a DLSS 4, right? So the game does not give you the option to, uh, in game at least, to disable DLSS 4. So we are using the transformer model here. Therefore, it is slightly more uh, intensive, right? DLSS 4 is a little bit heavier than normal DLSS 3. And uh, the same goes for FSR. I can't get FSR 4 to work in this game. If I did get it working, the performance would be pretty similar between them, right? But if you if you take the TAA results into consideration, it's pretty much the same. So therefore, upscaling should be more or less the same if the techniques are the same, right? But because we are using the LSS4 transformer model, it is slightly, slightly below. Not not a lot. You can see there that the average frame rate is sitting at 67 for the 5070 Ti and 70 for the 9070 XT. Now, if we just test the 4K high with uh, without ray tracing, right, just the LSS and FSR quality, both of these GPUs are going to give you a high refresh rate experience here, 170 frames per second on the 5070 Ti, 185 frames per second on the 9070 XT. Again, the performance differences would be down to the LSS 4 versus FSR 3, right? Uh, sure, I can go into the NVIDIA control panel and force the LSS 3, but people having NVIDIA GPUs would probably just use the LSS4, right? So even though the frame rate is slightly higher on the 9070 XT, the image with the LSS4 definitely is far superior to that of the FSR3 image, yeah. All right, so I think that's going to be the second last test. Let's move on to the last one. Now, before you sh start shouting at me for not testing path tracing at 4K, neither of these GPUs are capable of doing path tracing at 4K. Even with DLSS set to performance, we are hovering around 50 frames per second here. But I wanted to test this specific uh, setting here, 4K high without ray tracing, D DLSS FSR quality, and then frame duration enabled. And now we are seeing that the NVIDIA GPU is actually ahead which is weird because the 14 at uh, 1440p fsr was uh, quite a bit ahead but if you have a look at our previous results just the the clip before this one the results are almost similar we're getting around 10 percent higher frame rates here with fsr frame generation enabled than with it disabled whereas previously we get around 90 percent uh, increase to our frame rate with it enabled so Definitely some issues still with the, the AMD driver because no matter what I do here, the FSR uh, frame generation just doesn't activate properly. We saw it go up to 302 frames per second there, right? Uh, just at the previous turn, but now it goes back to 200 and something a little bit below the uh, NVIDIA GPU, whereas during that turn it was uh, well above the NVIDIA GPU. So, so some weird issues and that's why I wanted to include this one as well. All right, I think that's going to be it for this video. It was a little bit longer than I wanted, but I do appreciate each and every one of you watching. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.